This is Hillenbrand Fish and Wildlife Area. It's a wetland habitat here surrounded by prairie that's been created by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources biologists. And 25 years ago, this area was an open pit strip mine. When they were done, put all the dirt back and recontoured it to approximate the lay of the land before mining happened. And everything that is here now had to come in and all of it came in on its own. We came here because crawfish frogs are here. It's a mystery how crawfish frogs found this place. Nevertheless, once they got here, what they've managed to do is produce highest density of crawfish frogs in the state of Indiana. Part of the appeal is that this is one of the most secretive frogs in North America. It's been recognized from the start. The beauty of what crawfish frogs do is they live for 11 months in an area the size of a footprint. They spend all of their time when they're not in breeding wetlands like this one in upland burrows dug by crayfish. Normally what happens when frogs leave breeding wetlands, they don't go to a particular spot. What they do is they just go. But the difference here is that crawfish frogs use the same burrow throughout the year and they use the same burrow from year to year, across years. We have a frog here that migrated from this wetland in 2009, three quarters of a mile west to a burrow. These crayfish burrows are about two thirds of the size of a putting cup in golf. And so this frog was able to navigate to this burrow and hole up. We know that they can find burrows when the ground looks like this, thick prairie. And when to a frog moving through a thick prairie, it must be like humans moving through a thick jungle. And so these frogs have some idea of where they are on the landscape. And even if the landscape changes, they are still able to find their way. Frog survivorship, the percentage of frogs, adult frogs, that survive from one year to the next is somewhere between 60 and 70 percent, which is an astronomical rate for a frog. Frogs are animals that are meant to be eaten. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And it turns out for crawfish frogs that once you reach breeding size in two years, your probability of living to the next year is greater than 50%. And that's due almost entirely to this habitation of crayfish burrows. Burrows are to crawfish frogs what shells are to turtles. There he is. We were always interested in working with crawfish frogs because they're state endangered. And the goal of any research on an endangered species is to try to make that species unendangered. The most critical feature of uh, crawfish frog biology appears to be these upland burrows. And we know that if you run a plow over a landscape, you destroy the integrity of these burrows. And if you don't directly kill the frog, what you do is displace it. If you have a crawfish frog that lives a decade that returns to its burrow year in and year out, the integrity of that burrow has to be maintained for that decade. In modern America today, there just aren't so many of those places left. And if you just ask our society to maintain large tracts of grassland purely for the benefit of crawfish frogs, I don't think it's gonna happen. But if you could gain a million dollars in revenue from farming that vast area, crawfish frogs become irrelevant. I think the future of crawfish frogs is dependent on recognizing that they're important components to ecosystems and that these ecosystems are used by other species valued by humans. People would rather have these frogs around than have them go extinct. And so we took on the challenge 
of understanding enough about the biology of these animals to save them. And we all like a challenge. <laughs>